elite athletes may swear by carbon fiber racing shoes, but for the average Joe, do the running shoes make you faster? At lower speeds like 4.30 per kilometer or 7 minutes per mile pace, there might not be much benefit at all. Let's dive into the topic straight away. Nike has led the push of super shoes, having produced a pair to assist Elliot Kipchoge in breaking the zip tower marathon record. But with prices starting at 200 euros, is it really worth buying a pair of shoes in the hope that they will make you run faster? And over what distance does the advantage really start to add up? To answer this, it's necessary to first comprehend the technology underlying the carbon fiber racing shoes. The key improvements in the new super shoes are, they are lightweight, especially the upper of the shoes. The carbon fiber plate, which guides your running stride. And last, the foam underneath the carbon plate for maximal energy return. The two most important improvements on your running of these carbon fiber racing shoes are first, superior energy, storage and return in the foam. This makes an improvement in your running economy, you can run faster with the same amount of energy. Second, clever lever effects from the carbon plate on the ankle joint. This makes your running form and stride more efficient. That way, you also lose less energy during your running cycle. Both improvements focus on energy return or savings. So no wonder that carbon fiber racing shoes especially deliver faster times on the marathon, because there you need to save your energy over a long distance. So the carbon plate is not the most important material at all, which makes the shoes so fast. Researchers attribute the energy benefits mainly to the resilient and energetic foam in the midsole. So shouldn't we rename the shoes to energetic foam racing shoes instead of carbon fiber plate racing shoes? The evidence of faster running performances is pretty compelling, especially for long distance running. Since Zoom Vaporfly came out into the market in 2016, athletes have been smashing records worldwide. An analysis of the world rankings showed that in 2019, twice as many men ran a marathon under 210 and twice as many women went under 227 compared to 2016. Nice claim that the shoes allow for a 4% improvement in the running economy was confirmed by multiple studies. Translated to running performances, this means 2-3% better finishing times. But is this also true for non elite runners and slower speeds? The majority of the super shoes research focuses on speeds of 15 km an hour and faster. As mentioned just earlier, the results of the Vaporfly Next% percent up to a 4% more efficient running economy. What is running economy though? Running economy is defined as the energy demand for a given velocity of running. It is measured by the steady state consumption of oxygen, VO2 at a certain running speed. So you might wonder, what advantage is there when we are moving at slower paces? Well, there's good news. Some data from a case study is done by the lab red rundown. In the study, the Nike Vaporfly Next% percent 2's running economy is compared to that of a classic racing flat without carbon plate of a comparable weight, the SX Hyperspeed. The testing was done thoroughly. 16 runners, the total 18 males and 8 females, have tested both shoes on the treadmill. Runners completed 4 to 5 minute trials at each speed on the same day. You can see in the image that the Nike Vaporfly Next% percent made a 3.8% benefit in running economy at 16 km an hour, compared to the Essex shoe. Namely, the VO2 or oxygen consumption decreases in the Nike Vaporfly, which means you need to consume less oxygen to maintain the same speed. At lower paces, there is still a benefit, although it has decreased significantly. As we can see, at paces of 5 minutes per kilometer or 8 minutes per mile pace, the benefit in running economy was less than 2%. Probably because the energy return from the shoe is less. Energy return means input is output. So less output means less energy return. You probably also wonder what super shoe you should consider buying. How much was it? Uh, 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 how much was it? They gave it to me! So you're not gonna tell me how much was it? They gave it to me. I don't believe you. Why? How are they gonna give you something like that? They gave this, they gave it, they were like, hey, like, okay, yeah, they gave it to me. No, they didn't. Just tell me how much was it. Well, the Leopard Rundown served you with a detailed list of many racing shoes as well. 
Zooming in on this list, we see that especially the Nike Alphafly and Vaporfly perform the best on the treadmill. Second in line are the Metaspeed Sky lineup from Essex. If you want to learn more, take a look at the website of thelabratrundown.com. However, depending on running technique, running style, core and pelvic strength, the effects of carbon shoes have different effects on running performance for each runner. Therefore, it's not possible to predict which shoe suits you best. I would still recommend going down to your local shoe store and fit a few of the racing shoe models before buying your first pair of racers. The shoes with a carbon fiber plate are especially improving over the longer distances, let's say over more than 10 kilometers. These shoes increase your energy return and are designed to make your stride more efficient and spare the legs. Therefore, they are not designed for maximum speed but maintain a relatively high speed for a long time. So if you are looking for shoes that perform very well on a distance like a 5k, I would recommend the Adi Zero Takumi Sen 8 or the Nike Streak Fly Racing Shoe. To conclude, at speeds of every runner, there are still benefits from the carbon plate racing shoes. However, the advantage reduces with lower speed or shorter distances. If you want to buy some new racing shoes, I would not recommend buying the Nike shoes right away. Test for example the Metaspeed lineup or another carbon fiber plate shoe as well. Other factors like comfort, running form and weight of the shoe have an impact on your running performance as well. Thanks for watching. I hope you smash some new puppies on a fresh pair of races as well. Don't forget to hit the like or subscribe button. If you still go out there, have fun and get on the run.